Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we are going to get started on the Frilly Fun album and I'm really looking forward to it. So here's the album. We had a, a little walkthrough of it uh, in the last video, which you can see. And today we're gonna start cutting and possibly get page one put together. Um, we are using the Frilly Fun pattern or guide from my Etsy shop. The link is down below. The guide will include all of the uh, cutting guides for each of the pages, instructions for assembly, as well as quite a large number of templates that you may want or need. In addition, it includes all of the cut files you'll need to cut this book on your silhouette. So you can either use the cutting guides that are come in the guide, or you can use the cut files and cut it on your silhouette, or you can use a combination, and we'll talk about it as we go along. I'll move that aside. And here is, again, this is the book. And let me show you what we're going to use. This is Artisan Cardstock, which you may remember from some of my other videos, is my favorite. And I get it at Country Craft Creations. It's really beautiful. It, it feels beautiful. It's got a little texture to it. Cuts like a dream. I just really like it a lot. And this is a 12 by 12. And what I've done, sorry, what I've done here is cut three and a half inches off so that I have eight and a half by 12. The reason for that is the silhouette will cut eight and a half by 11, but a, but a 12 inch piece will fit on the mat. So rather than just only cut off you know, an inch um, and then have an inch left over, I'm gonna leave the mat long and I'll have a bigger scrap at the end that we can maybe use for something else. And also, um, I'm going to save these because we can probably use these later on too. So I'm going to set those aside over here. And the paper line that I'm going to use is so cute. It is Fall Break and it is from Cartabella. I also got this at Country Craft Creations. Can't tell it's one of my favorite shops. Um, and I've pulled out some sheets already that I'm going to use. I don't know if I'm going to use them all that come with it, but I know I'm probably going to use these. And I'll just give you, they're so cute. So there's that one. These are all double-sided. Just give you an idea what it looks like. Okay, so you'll see more of these as we go along. All right, so let me put these aside. And I mentioned in our last video that you should have, to cut this book, a new mat. And this is my um, a silhouette brand mat. I know there's some off-brand mats that are, I guess, less expensive. Um, I don't find this terribly expensive, though, and I, I don't know. I've just never used one of them. I guess I should give them a try and see how they are. But uh, this, so this is my brand new mat, and I got this blade. Now, I have always used... Here, I think I can reach mine. Uh, okay, here we are. The sort of basic blade... I think it costs seven dollars and change or something it's not very expensive but when I was shopping I saw this blade which wasn't much more expensive and it says you get a lot more use out of it which would be nice because I do go through a lot of these blades they seem to dull pretty quickly but I cut things like you know glitter vinyl and stuff so that's probably why but anyway so I'm gonna change out to a new blade I'm gonna get my new mat ready and we're gonna um, cut start cutting and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the cut files are and I'll insert a video here where we talk about um, how they are laid out because I want to do a screen grab of that so you can see it and then we'll come back and we'll cut okay so I'll be right back okay so I have my screen up and I'm gonna um, sort of just quickly cover a couple things if you look here this is uh, page one of the the bases. You've got uh, base part two and you've got two of those. You're going to need four so there's more on other pages. Uh, page two flap, page two belly band, and page two base frills. This one just happens to have um, pieces that are mostly from the same page. Let me see if I can open another one here. And um, here, So here I've got page four I've got the binding pieces and a couple more base mats. Basically what I tried to do was fit as many pieces as I could on as few pages as possible to save you paper. So you'll find things scattered all over the place. 
and you're, what you should do is print each page, then paper clip them together, and I'll show you, paper clip them together by page that you cut. In other words, like everything on this page will be clipped together as page one. And then you know, do all the rest, page two, page three, page four, etc. Then once you've finished, you can go back and refer and see which pieces go on which page of the book, rearrange them and reclip them together so that you have all of the book page one together, book page two together, etc. Okay, so then when you get to the mats, these are really mixed up a lot and you've got some options. If you're going to cut them on an eight and a half by 12 piece of paper, like we talked about, then just go ahead and, and cut these just the same way. The reason they're really mixed up a lot is to try to give as much variety in the mats as possible. Like if I have a page that has like a pocket and a flip and you know whatever on it, a fold out, I don't want the mat to be the same for all of the elements. So by mixing them up as much as possible, that reduces you having that chance of duplication, especially if you have double-sided paper. Every cut gives you two choices. I am really fussy about my mats and picking out exactly how they lay out and which paper I use. And I almost didn't cut the mats. I, I really didn't think I could. I was like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll just cut the mats the usual way. But then I thought, well, what's the point of that? I, if the project is to see if I can do it with a silhouette, I need to cut the whole thing that way. So it forced me out of my comfort zone and it came out really well, I think. So anyway, so when you get to the mats, you can cut them like this full sheet or, and I'll show you this as we go along, you can actually rearrange these onto scrap size pieces and use up some other pieces if you want. And I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. But anyway, so let's go back here. Um, this is page one. And when I go to print it, you're gonna go to, um, oh, you know what, I don't have my silhouette hooked up. Well, it doesn't really matter because I, I don't have to send it, but you'll go to send. And then I'm gonna click this. Usually I believe it starts out on simple and you can see everything's lit up and it's gonna cut these words. Well, that would be terrible. So go up here to where it says line, click that, and then select only the red lines to print, or to cut, excuse me. So now it's only gonna cut these and it's not gonna cut the words. All right, and then set your, um, your settings for cutting however works best for your paper. And you're gonna do some test cuts ahead of time. Um, you can use one of those three and a half inch pieces you cut off or just a scrap to make sure you've got the right settings. And then I'm gonna go back here. When you get to the mats, um, excuse me, not the mats, the tags. Hang on, let me open the tags. And the inserts. Okay, this, as you can see, has two different colors, right? It's got red and blue. So when you send this file to be cut, you need to choose which color, and as you can see, it looks like I've actually got purple here too, what color you wanna cut. The red is going to be the outside, the base of the insert, which I'll show you um, when I come back to, the, uh, to my workspace. But the red would be the larger pieces. Then after you cut those out of your base color, in my case, it's gonna be the dark green, then you'll print the same page again, but this will be the mats. And in that case, you'll choose the blue, and apparently I've made one of these purple, so. And that will print your mats. This will be just like I mentioned a second ago. You may not want to print all of these mats out of the same pattern paper. And that being the case, I will show you how you can move them to, uh, to cut on a smaller piece. However, um, you are going to cut these twice, once with the red and once with the inner line color, okay? Hopefully that's clear. If it's not, please ask me down in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you out with it, okay? All right, so I am going to go away from this screen grab and then be right back and we will um, start cutting. Okay, so I am using one of my three and a half inch 
cut off pieces to test. My, um, my cut settings. And there is a little test button on your silhouette, and that's what I used to see. And oh, that's not good. All right. Now I'm just gonna flip this piece over because I've already made that was actually my second test cut. Oh, I'm sorry, there's my phone making noise. my blade depth. And again, I'm not giving you specific settings because every combination of blade and mat and paper is different. So you're just going to have to do what I'm doing and sort of play around with it until you get something that seems to work. set really high and it is not doing the trick so I am gonna go back to my old blade and see see what I get with that So that fancy blade was a bust, and I ended up going back to my good old black blade. So maybe I just don't know what I'm doing with this one, but I'll play with it some more and see what the deal is. But I'm happy with that cut, gave me nice clean edges, and after I did the, the test ones, I don't know if you, I guess you could see, I just went ahead and cut a tag um, that I'll be able to use later. Okay, so let me set that aside. Let's go to our full-size paper. And I'm not, I'm not giving a lot of details on how to use your silhouette because I'm assuming if you're tackling a project like this, you've probably used it a fair bit. But um, you want to make sure that your paper is adhered down very well to your mat, which is why you want a new mat because they get kind of unsticky. And I hear you can re-sticky them, but I haven't tried it. Insert that. And we're going to go to page one and send. And this one has red only. Make sure we don't cut the words. Settings are the same, the paper is the same. And I'm hitting send. off your mat. Now if you want you could go ahead and make little piles like these are base ones right like those are all for the base. This is for page two. This is another base and all the rest of the pieces are page two and just mark them or perhaps make eight envelopes one for each page or nine eight envelopes uh, eight pages plus the cover and then as you take them off the cutting mat, you can put them each into their designated envelope. And I'm gonna cut, pull this piece. Now this is why I left the paper, I that out of the way, sorry about that, um, 12 inches long, because it left me with a really quite a good size piece here that I could probably use, uh, maybe even use that. So I'm gonna set this aside because I'm probably gonna be able to reuse that. And then we need to get these pieces off and 
because this is a new made, made mat, it might be tricky, but I've got my little spatula here just to get it started. And voila, and I only just have a couple little bits that need to be poked out. Whoops, dust bunny on my pokey tool. There we go. Okay, see that? Perfect. And that's from page two, so I'm going to put that over here in this stack. Whoops, I should have used my special I damaged that piece a little bit. There we go. All right, and that one came up just fine. Okay, so all of those are page two pieces. So I'm going to grab a paper clip. them together. I'm just going to grab a little scrap, which I'm sure everybody has little scraps lying around their, their workspace. If you're a paper crafter, it's inevitable. And we're going to call this page two. And then I'm going to call it SS page one, which is Silhouette Studio page one, just so I know that these pieces were cut with the group that was page one. In case I lose track later. Now, before I cut the next piece, put my base pieces aside, I need to get these bits off. So, I've got my little spatula and I'm gonna scrape them. And I'm gonna do it just off camera here to the side. I have a little trash receptacle and I'm just scraping them into that. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'll take the next piece, lay it down. Firmly. Okay, and I'm gonna go to page two. You can't see this on, on the screen, but um, going to the next page to cut. Insert that. cut the rest of these pages and I will be right back. So I have finished cutting all of the base pieces and it did not take very long. Now the one, I didn't cut page seven. That's the um, the vellum pocket that goes on page eight because I didn't feel like resetting my machine to cut vellum and it's only one piece so I may cut it by hand. Um, the only other piece that's not cut is the piece that wraps around the cover because the portrait isn't doesn't cut big enough to cut that piece. So um, that I'll cut by hand as well. If you have a cameo though, I believe you can cut that piece. And the measurement is in the guide, so just, you can go ahead and cut that. All right, so now, if you are not using your silhouette, you can go ahead, I'm setting these pieces aside, I don't need them, and cut what we need for page one. And let's real quick put page one together and then we'll stop and next time We'll do the matting. So if you're doing page one, it's right here in the guidebook, what you need to cut, okay? And it's pretty simple. You just need the pocket piece and the template is in the guide. Um, and if you don't have a punch, you can go ahead and cut it straight. If Maybe if you have a die cutting machine, you know, or, or I just drew a blank, a Sizzix, something like that, you can go ahead and cut it with that, all right? Otherwise, just go ahead and leave it straight. And then you're going to need two base pieces, one of part one and part two, the larger and the smaller. Let me set those aside. Right there. And, all right, hang on a second, I'm going to grab some tools. Okay. So what we need to do is make the base. This is a quite a straightforward page. So let me grab my scoring tool. You're gonna put the larger of the two base pieces in your scoreboard. This is five inches across. So you're gonna go ahead and put the five inch side there. You're gonna score it at four and a half and at one half. You can adjust your cut sizes if you're if you're confident and you know how to you know make these books, which 
I, I suspect most people who are watching my videos probably have made at least a few. Um, if you prefer your tabs to be not so large, I like them fairly big. Um, I'll, I can cut them down after, but to have them big, it's easier to handle. Um, so then go ahead and fold your tabs and burnish them well. I'll get this out of the way. You'll need it again in a minute. You could go ahead and make all four of your base pieces now because they're all the same. Right, so like that. And then you're gonna take a double-sided tape and put it on the tab. This is score tape. I get it at Amazon. They also have it at Country Craft Creations. They have it at, I'm not sure where else they have it. Maybe scrapbook.com has it, although they have their own brand uh, now, so they may not carry it, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so we're gonna take the tape off one side. This piece is a square, so you don't have to worry about, you know, which side to put. Line up the edge neatly, neatly, neatly. Burnish it well. You'll do it a little neater than I did. It's a little hard for me to do because I can't get my head over it. And just pull off the other piece. And line it up. Cutting these by machine, they're pretty accurate and easy to line up. Okay, so you've made yourself a tube. You can see that this, this paper is so dark, but I think you can. So there's your tube. That's your base. You want four of these, okay? And um, I probably won't show you how to do it again in the other videos because it's pretty straightforward, and I'm going to make all mine ahead, I think. I'll just go ahead and make the others in a minute. Okay, so now you've got your pocket piece. And this one is a little bit trickier just because it's such a funky shape. But what you need to do is you need to score from here down to this corner on these two tabs. Then you need to score here, which is two inches, and then it's four inches, all right? So I'm gonna line this up. There, oops. Now can you see? I think you can see. My hand's probably in the way, I'm sorry. Just being real fussy here. Okay. And score that one. These tabs are a little bit narrower than the, the half inch that I used. It, I adjusted the tabs. Most of the tabs are half inch. I believe these are three eighths. And I used a quarter inch in a couple of places. I know I did on the vellum pocket, and I think I did a couple other places. Okay, so now you can go ahead and put this in the scoreboard. And this is, looks like just a hair under two inches. You just want to score right on the corner there. You want it straight. There, and then at four. Got it. This is going to be your little, I don't know, it's like a fold over pocket. All right. And it's going to go here, which looks a little funny, but this is going to flip up. So I'm going to turn, turn it over because I like the to fold on the mounted sides. And you're going to fold these inward like that and burnish them. Then this gets folded up like that, and it looks like I didn't score it quite straight, so just fuss with it as needed to get it straight. That's not bad. Okay. And then this gets folded over to form the flat. All right? Not so hard. So what we need to do is put tape here and here, and I think my 3 8 inch tape is too wide for that. So I'm grab some narrow. Let's see. I got, I got 
some of that scrapbook.com tape. It's pretty good. It's it's cheaper than the score tape, and I haven't had any problems with it. Um, you can see, real that. Can you see that those are angled here? So if you've cut this by hand, make sure you trim that. Okay. Um, it's uh, the template itself has them angled, so I think. Oh, I almost put that on the wrong side. So I think you'll be able to do it. Let's see it all right. Sometimes I feel like I'm so awkward getting this tape on. A bunch of other people making mini albums and doing demos, and they're so graceful about it. And I am just so awkward and clumsy. Oh well. Okay. If you're using a light colored base, you might want to um, ink this. I, I'm not. I don't usually ink my. Faces. I usually only ink my mats, so I'm not inking it. So just line that edge up, and then line that edge up, and there we go, like that. So now we have our pocket, and we have our base. And oops, now the opening is to the right and left, and the sealed edges are top and bottom. And you just want to attach this pocket to the bottom. Now, you can, if you want, just glue the whole thing and put it down, but I want to make a pocket out of it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just glue here. However, before I glue it down, I want to add a piece of seam binding to the back of the pocket, which we will use to close the pocket. Let me grab mine so you can see. So this piece of ribbon is attached to the back of the pocket. If it wasn't, if it was attached to the base, you wouldn't be able to put anything in the pocket. So I'm going to attach that. This one is under the mat, so it can be added later. Just cut a piece that's going to be long enough for you to tie in a ribbon. And that piece is, I mean, tie in a bow, and that piece is probably way too big. And you're going to take your, if you're, if you're very, uh, fussy about such things, you can measure, but I'm going to eyeball it. Oops, it's stuck to my scissors. Okay, so this is the flap, so you want to make sure your, your ribbon is coming out the top. I'm just going to eyeball the middle and put it going vertically, just like that. Let's burnish it down. Peel that off. Oops. And then attach that. And you want to be sure that you completely cover that tape, otherwise you're going to uh, seal the pocket shut. I didn't do that very straight, but it's fine. Okay, so then we need to put, you need to leave this unglued. I don't even know if you could see that. This part's unglued. We're going to put glue on these three sides. And I am using art glitter glue, which you can get at. Amazon or Country Craft Creations and probably other retailers, but the, that's where I would get it. I have no affiliation with uh, scrapbook.com or Country Craft. They're, they're just places I like to shop. Put as thin a bead as you can. This stuff's strong. It'll hold. Um, and you don't want to make... Uh, you don't want so much adhesive that you can't put anything in the pocket. Okay. It's a little fuzzy there. Oops. Yes, after I told you not to use too much glue, I just put a big glob of glue down here. your tape out of the way and you want to line this up with the bottom edge and side to side it should line up 
pretty well since it's again it was cut on a machine but my templates should be accurate I tested them quite a few times so even if you cut it by hand I think you'll find that it fits pretty well okay and then if it's if you've got any extra room that you can move it if it's not perfect side to side you want to push it more to the right because the left is the part that's going into the binding okay there all right, so this page is done, except for the mats. Okay, so now we have the, um, the base page made. We're going to need mats. So let me close this. So I've cut down some of my pattern paper to the same size, the eight and a half by 12, and saved the cutoff pieces because we're going to use those when we cut our, here they are, when we cut our inserts and tags and things. And these we're going to cut the same. Now there's only four pages of mats, so I have to pick four pages. And it's very hard for me to give up so much control when I cut my mats because I just want everything just so. I like this one, but I feel like the back may be a little large in scale for a book this size, but we'll see. I love these polka dots. I'm definitely going to use that, and I love these acorns. And this is a good large scale print so we'll definitely use that these little squares are cute and i like these leaves and what's on the other oh the stripe is cute extremely directional all the prints in this or not all of them but a lot of the prints in this pack are directional so those are quite similar so i think i'm safe getting rid of the squares so that gives me that there's the stripes, so now I need to decide if I want this piece with the pumpkins. I kind of like that, although I have pumpkins here, and I do like those polka dots. See how much I dither? It just takes me forever. If I do that, that gives me another piece with the green, although I have the green polka dots. I'm going to stick with these four. And then if I want some more, I can either use them on the um, inserts or I can just cut some more mats. Alright. So let me. I usually keep the piece of paper that comes with my cutting mat on it when I'm not using it. And you're going to end up with, if you, if you have directional prints and you cut them the way I'm cutting them, you are going to end up with some um, of your directional prints facing sideways, but you can always use the back side of the paper. Um, I kind of got over it. Um, on my book, let me see, let me see, Let's see if I can find one, just because I kind of had to, Let's see, yeah, like here, this is, you know, the, the type is facing sideways on this piece, and there are quite a few in here like that, but overall it doesn't really seem to matter, so. I'm just going to slide this forward again. I'll be right back. I'm going to cut all these mats. No need to be able to watch. And if you are cutting them by hand, go ahead and use the cutting guide and the enclosed templates and get your mats cut. I'm not sure what happened, but this part of the video, the audio didn't record, so I'm going to do a voiceover. Um, you can see that I have the mats cut out. And I'm just checking to see how I want to lay them out. And I'm going to put that plaid one there on the pocket. That little narrow strip is, if you were to cut that flap straight, you might want to add a mat there. Or if your um, die or whatever you use is narrow and you want to add a mat there. So there's two of those in the, in the mat cutting uh, cut files in case you want to add that. And I'm getting out some ink to ink the edges. I'm using a uh, walnut stain, Distress Ink Walnut Stain, not the oxide, just the regular one. All 
So here I am just inking the edges. And that's a uh, Tim Holtz, I'm not sure what they call it, a blending tool, I guess. And here I realized that because I had put, I think I realized at this point, I put more glue than I intended on that pocket. And the original page wasn't intended for the flat pocket to also be a pocket. So the mat is a little too wide and I'm gonna end up, you'll see here, having to trim it down a little bit. And now I am getting some double-sided tape to put under the pocket mat to hold the other ribbon to hold that holds the flap closed and I'm just centering it on the front of the pocket right there and pull off the back and then add the other ribbon making sure to cover up the the tape fully and now add the mat and I'm using art glitter glue to add my mats And then I realized I was out of the frame. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and just uh, put glue around the edges, not too much, and some in the middle, and then just center it on the pocket. And I always like to use my um, bone folder, my Teflon bone folder, to just gently rub over the mats to make sure that they're fully adhered. And then the ribbons can be tied and the extra length uh, cut off, which I guess I'm going to do after matting. All right, that's where I realized I was going to have to trim that mat. No, apparently not. Apparently I glued this first, then I realized it was too big. So you should always check your fit first. Uh, most of these mats are going to fit just right, but here, like I said, because this was not originally designed to be a pocket, this particular mat's a little wide. Or you could lay this mat down first and then glue the pocket on top of it, which in the in retrospect, is probably what I should have done. It would have looked nicer. So I think I could have forced that mat in there, but it was going to be a really tight fit. So I'm just reaching out. My um, paper cutter is just off to the side, and I'm trimming it down. bit more. I believe I ended up taking about a quarter of an inch off. And there you go. And you can see it's got um, quite a bit side to side. And I think it would have looked nicer if I had just put it down first and then glued the pocket down. But that's um, personal choice. Let's see what you think. If you don't use as much glue to put your pocket down, you might not need to cut quite so much off. And that is that. And it looks really cute. That paper is just really, really pretty. I love fall and this paper is great for any fall project. I like Halloween, but I'm a real fan of Thanksgiving. So I like fall papers that are more fall Thanksgiving than Halloween. And I'm just tying the ribbon in the uh, seam binding and trimming off the edges, the, uh, the extra rather. All 
Okay, so that is page one finished. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize for having to do a voiceover at the end. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments down below. And uh, click the notification bell so you're notified when we do the next page. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.